Okay, welcome back to this tutorial. It is all your brains time now, which is a very, very difficult level, which is why I do it second. Um, it can be very RNG heavy in terms of what layout you get, and I mean, back when we had to do it in order, and this was the last one, it was like, oh my god, just give, please, please have mercy on me. It is the longest level in the worm, um, and well, let's just get into it. Okay, so I got very lucky with this layout, so uh, <laughs> we're just going to win through a pretty good layout at the start now. Okay, that was a, I mean, this is an incredible layout, I wish I got that layout in an actual room, that would be, that would be nice. Okay, yeah, that's an insane layout. <laughs> um, God, that, okay, well, you certainly don't expect to get that every single time. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that's more typical. <laughs> okay, um, so, where do I start? The main thing you have to look out for when you're trying to pick out a layout, because that's the most important part, is determining what layout is good. That that is the that's half the skill in all your brains. Is look at the sun. That is the most important part. You know, the three pieces is very important, magnets are very important, the you know, the stuff is kind of important, maybe the squash. But the sun is what determines everything. If you have a lot of sun at the front, then it's gonna be a good layout. So like this. I mean, there's still, there's only one sun in the back two columns, so you could just get so much sun and then start playing the layout. You know, and then get your ladder up here. So, sun is the most important part of the layout. If you have a lot of sun, I'd say play it. Just, especially if you're not, you know, if you're not that confident on it. If you can get sun, you can take it a bit more slowly and you'll be able to just go through the level and get to the next one. And th that's really important for all your brains, since it is a very difficult level. So just look for a lot of them. But there are other things that, that, there are other factors that are important in determining whether this layout is good or not. And like I said, the main other two are the free Peter and the Magnet. So the free Peter is important because it's controlling these two lanes. These two lanes are only instants. So, you know, there's no point in putting a bucket head here. <laughs> yeah. So, what you want to really do is just send a bunch of imps. You basically never use any zombie other than imp, apart from maybe a pole wall to appear. Imps are everything in these rows, but they only have three hit points. So they're going to die very quickly before they can even get eaten and be of any use. So, you need to get rid of that free Peter before you do anything. So you need to get as much sun as you possibly can and get rid of it. So, what you need to do for that, you need to get 300 sun in order to do that. You need to get over this tall nut. This magnet can never reach it. Get over that tall nut and get to the free feeder. Now, if the free feeder is far back, it takes ages, ages to get to the free feeder with the ladder. And sometimes, if you're unlucky, the ladder can actually get destroyed, because the ladder doesn't actually have that much HP in the grand scheme of things compared to other armored zombies. Uh, which can just slow it down immediately because I mean the ladder is so fast until you lose the ladder and yeah. So another thing to keep in mind of course is the magnet. The magnet is what gatekeeps the bottom two rows really because bottom two rows have a lot of firepower so you want to send in your footballers and your, and your ladder zombies. Your fast, uh, your fast zombies that can take a lot of hits. I think that having it in column six is actually rather good. Uh, this isn't a great layout because there's not too much sun at the front and three pieces back here. But what you can do, oh god, I need to actually get through this to get to show my point. Okay, what you can do, if it's on the very, very far back, you can actually place this before you bungee it and it will never, the bungee will always get rid of the magnet before it can be affect, before it affects the, uh, the footballer. So, Con 6 Magnet is actually pretty good. 
column four magnet is the worst in my opinion because I, I mean you it's still affected up to here but you can't easily just like send a coned or uh, a vaulter over to get it so you have to bungee it and it's like ugh. You, but you, you know you still have to wait for it to actually get bungee before you can send it it's terrible Column three is like all white, and column three I mean like three away. It's not column three was actually the worst, but uh, because you can cone head and then vault, and that's slightly faster than bunging, I think, and it gets rid of. I mean, it might not be slightly faster than bunging actually, but it does get rid of um, quite a few plants, so it will be faster in the end. Uh, but it's still like uh, I don't, I don't really like it. Um, so that's second position, and obviously if you have. Um, if you have it like right here, you can just vault it or you can cone head. And that's completely fine. If you have it in column two, what you can do is you can bungee and then you can footballer. And like that will always work, that will never be uh it, it looks it gets pretty scary, but you'll you will be fine. Okay, so one thing I want to talk about, this is a pretty good layout to illustrate my point, is, you know, it might seem like, okay, we need to send imps here, get rid of a free Peter, and then send more imps. What's actually better is just send a Conan. Because, you know, sending two imps would cost 100 soon, and that's, I mean, you don't really have that. You can send an imp here because it's going to immediately die to the squash. And then you just get rid of this, and then you can send this down here. I timed that one. But it worked out. Yeah, obviously you should also be worrying about this magnet, um, but I'm not actually playing it, so <laughs> it's fine. Same thing goes here, you can use the conid on the third row as well, if it's like this, and it will be fine. Okay, so when you get a situation like this, which happens pretty commonly, um, what you can do is you can send a conid, and it can be a little bit tricky to always get the timing right, if you send an imp just in time, the chomper will eat the imp, and you can continue eating with the cone. And then it can activate this chomper, or the, the squash if it's over there. And so that is a really, really good way uh, to get a lot of sun, and it clears out, you know, a couple of chompers here uh, from being able to eat you again. So I think that is pretty a pretty important aspect. It's not the end of the world if you can't do it. Uh, because it's not going to come up every layout, it's pretty... I mean, it, there's a chance it will come up, but um, it's not going to come up all the time. But it, it, it's pretty nice when you can do it, and it makes you feel really good at the game. <laughs> the star fruit is usually not that big a deal. Um, it, it's pretty bad at firing, like, it will sometimes fire when it can't hit you, or it won't fire when it can hit you, it's very weird. But, Column 1 star fruit is the worst, it's just the worst thing. Because when you have an imp, and it's just going to be one imp at the end because you've got through all your chompers and they've eaten all your other imps, it, you, the star fruit will fire three times before the imp can finish eating and moving on to the next tile. So it will kill the imp, so you have to be very mindful of that. You have to either have something block, blocking you up here, you have to either have two imps here, or you have to just have it destroy you already. But usually they're not that big of a problem because they're just kind of terrible at firing. Uh, although they can sometimes be a nuisance if it's like around here. Or that it's firing over here. It can sometimes be a bit finicky. Okay, so for this layout, what I'd love to do to get as much sun as possible is send these guys over here. Because there's no risk of them dying soon. And then I send another portal to here so that we can eat the entirety of this sunflower and activate this and that chomper. And then, you know, obviously we can send some ladders, we can get rid of this guy, and then we can put all the, you know, mag and then bungee the magnet. And you just have so much sun available. You have to be careful with this, because this will get, the ladder will get destroyed. And, you know, you just need to be careful to remember that this isn't, like, you, you, you can often get into the mindset during, um, during all your brains that the second row is like you don't have to worry about it at all because it's basically always going to be fine um, with two ladders but there are some cases like that where it can be the limiting factor and yeah 
can be, it's pretty obvious to say, but it can be really hard to just focus on the entire layout, like I said, with the second column, or sorry, second row there. Um, you know, you can get kind of focused on just a couple rows at a time, because there's just so much going on, there's so many different elements in this level that you have to keep focused on. Right? It can be really hard to like pay attention to specific ones, or just pay attention to the whole thing, and it, so like, you know, you, like, you can see this and you can be like, oh my god, there's so much sun at, uh, at the top, and just completely forget about, this is really good too, and you need to be focusing on that. Or, alternatively, alternatively, you could see this and be like, oh my god, that's great. This is amazing, this is an amazing layout. Look at how much sun there is at the top, and this is decent. But, you know, the three pieces so far back, and then the magnets, like, it's in a fine place, but, you know, there's so much sun at the back still, and... I mean, what are you really going to be doing here? Like, what is the goal? No, it's just going to take a little while to actually get going, and... And once it does get going, it's pretty good, but... And, and then you have to wait. And... You know, you don't want to be sending these guys and just... Yeah, it's just... It, it's fine, but it, you need to be careful about it. Another thing I want to talk about is using shields. So, other zombies as shields. We kind of talked about it a bit with this idea. Um, in that we're using the cone head as a shield for our, our imp so it doesn't get destroyed by the free peter. And then we're using the imp as a shield for the cone head. That's basically how shielding works. Um, but you can also have it in... I mean, this isn't a particularly good case to show it, but... We can do this as well. I mean, I'd probably wait a little bit to send me in, but, yeah. And, also, if we go back to the very beginning, when I showed off... Oh, that's unlucky. <laughs> when I showed off, um, just a full one through, you could see that my imp was being shielded by the footballer, because the footballer has a slightly bigger hitbox than the imp. So, there's another thing that is extremely niche. It is never going to come up, trust me. Like, the few times it does, I go, <gasps> I mean, it's not even that good. It's not even that good of a strategy, I'll be honest, but I love it. It's my baby. And it takes ages to get a layout, because it's so rare to happen. Uh, I might end up just intercutting this with footage. Oh, no, here we go. Here we go. So, you need a very specific set of circumstances for this to happen. You need the magnet down here, and then you need two sunflowers here. This is the only way this works. When you send a digger down here. <laughs> and so the digger won't die from all the pea shooters. Um, Darfur is being a bit annoying, but... And it will actually be able to get to the end of the, the, <laughs> the line. Again, this rarely ever comes up, but when it does, I'm like, oh my god, this is my time. Uh, so yeah, I just that's just a neat strategy to keep in mind. Again, it's not important at all. It really, you know, there might be one situation where it comes up again. I mean, I also have another video on a strategy that's very similar to this. That, I mean, it's just not practical to use at all. <laughs> okay, so uh, we also have to keep in mind the bungees. So sometimes, not here, but I'm gonna do it here. It's gonna, yeah, but. Um, this gets rid of a squash and it, <laughs> and the bungee gets eaten by the chomper, so that kind of disables the chomper. Uh, and because we do the level so fast, the chomper will never be able to, like, we get another chance of eating another zombie. That's just not really in on the table because we just finish the level so fast. And that's definitely something to keep in mind. Again, not in that specific situation. Uh, probably not in this situation either, but since it's so far forward, but again, we can do this. Then we can do like this, and I, that might work in some situations. All Your Brains is... it's a weird one, because technically, there are only two plants that are fixed in place. The Tornut and the Torchwood, that's the only plants that are fixed in place. But, every single plant is fixed to a specific row. Every single one. There is you, you cannot get a potato mine down here, for example. You're always going to get two sunflowers, three pea shooters, and then a torchwood at the end. You're always going to get a fume, a split pea, a sunflower, a magnet, a skelly shroom, and a starfruit, but not necessarily in that order. 
So it's kind of a weird one because you, you have a general strategy, you have like a template of your general strategy, but you have to mix up the order in which you do it or you have to do it in a slightly different way. But it, the, the same general strategy is always going to be there. You know, get as much sun as you can. This is a good example of using a cone head. I like to send two pole waters and there's two sunflowers here so we can get all of them and you know, get sun here. And oh, this is a great layout, by the way. Because, you know, Magnet and Sleepy people are so far forward and there's so much sun. And this is going to be really, really good. I could have maybe sent an imp there, but I don't know, it's not the end of the world because there's no Sleepy Peter. So, I'm gonna bungee that to get the squash out of the way. And I have completely neglected this one because I've been too busy talking, but it's gonna be fine, I'll just send an there. I actually misplayed this slightly. Um, because what I should have strictly done, strictly, I shouldn't have sent two, uh, two footballers, because in actuality, not only is the ladder cheaper, it's also faster. The ladder is slightly faster than the, uh, slightly faster than the, uh, footballer, and I'll show you how in a bit. Again, using this strategy, it's actually, like, more useful than it seems. So... Okay, I'm gonna give the football the head start, and, I mean, look at that, that's just, yeah, it, it, it's slightly faster, and by a good bit, actually, I didn't even realise it was that much. So when you can, you should use the ladder. But you need to be careful to not just, like, send the ladder there willy-nilly, <laughs> because if you, for example, I'm just gonna punch you, that's not how you should play this, but if you were to send the ladder on this fourth row, for instance, it's just going to die, because the ladder really does not have that high HP. And yeah, it's about to die immediately, basically. Well, not immediately, but yeah. And now you don't really have a fast zombie in that lane anymore. And you also have to be kind of careful on this flow, although, I mean, this flow is better than the ladder one, but you have to be careful of the fume. If it's far back, and it might cause some problems. Only other thing I can think of right now is sometimes you'll be wanting to send uh, pole vaulters on this top row instead of anything else. I also sometimes, about to say, I also sometimes like to send the vaulter down here uh, if it's got three of the attacking plants in a row, um, just so that it can protect the uh, shield, the ladder for a little bit longer, and it can get there faster. Um, that's sometimes a nice thing to do. So sometimes. On the top row, I will do this. I actually, I'm not entirely sure which one is faster, whether I should send two uh, imps or one vaulter. I think sending two imps is the best way to go if you have spare sun, because it does cost slightly more, uh, but it's also going to definitely be faster if you can bungee this potato mine before the, imp, the first imp gets there. Okay, so now we're going to do, uh, should I play this layout or not? Can, what would I play it? Okay, so this one, the top is good, the top's very good, but you know, the three beats is very far back, and you know, this, there's not much sun other than in the top row, and a bit here. Magnet's in a good place, but again, not good enough to accept. This is awful. I mean, three beats and Magnet are great, but there's no sun. The, the sun is all at the back, and the sun is the, the most vital part. Okay, this has some front, some at front, but you have to be careful of the back as well. You know, if you have like three or four... Yeah, if you have four sunflowers in the first two columns, it's probably not going to be very good. This one... Mmm, uh, it's playable. It could be played. It's not going to be fast. It won't be fast. But you know, three Peter's fine. You have a lot of sun open to you. Magnet isn't in fourth or third column. Um, so it's fine. You know, you can make it work. It's not going to be good, though. It's not going to be great. This one... I think you could play. Yeah, I think you definitely could play. I'm going to amend my statement. It should be five sunflowers in the back. If there's five sunflowers in the back, then it's terrible. <laughs> um, I mean, this one still won't be very good because of the magnet. And... Yeah, no, never mind. Ignore me. I, I amend my amendment. <laughs> it's four sunflowers, yeah. Yeah, this is terrible. Yeah, not enough sun. 
<laughs> yeah, it's playable. It's playable. Because there's quite a bit of fun for you, uh, creepy to far forward. Might see it. And actually, this is a great opportunity to use the Volta. And now we just send it on the floor. Here, here. I've actually kind of left the bottom row for a bit because it's always been cleared a lot. So I'm gonna send it. Okay, the star fruit. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's when the star fruit can be. Yeah. You, you always look. At, oh, it, it's so annoying because it's the last thing you expect to harm you, and it's just. It's a wild card, basically. It barely ever comes in handy, but it does sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Um. This is. This is an interesting one. Because there's four sunflowers in the back, so it shouldn't be great. But I do kind of like it, for some reason I can't fully describe. I think the magnet being so close helps. I just like having this stick clear, I guess. And one thing, is I can send a digger down here to get these uh, sunflowers. And it and clear the way. So this isn't going to be fast, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world, but it's going to be good enough. Oh, that star fruit just. Well, how did the star fruit get through there? Okay. When there's a sunflower way, I definitely recommend using a Volta instead of two. Um, instead of two imps. I think that's definitely the smart play. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I hope that was of use to you. It might not be. I don't know. I don't know if I explained everything particularly well, but I hope it was of use.